secret sin. That's what we're talking about today on Through the Bible. But don't go away. We'll also learn how a right relationship with God brings life and peace. I'm Steve Schwetz, and I'm so glad that you hopped aboard the Bible bus for another great study with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Now, last week in our study of Leviticus 14, we discovered that leprosy is a metaphor for sin. And today, as we begin chapter 15, we continue that conversation as we consider sin's contagious nature. So grab your Bible and open to Leviticus. And while you do, Greg and I have got a few things that we want to share with you. Yeah, Steve, today we just have a short bit of time, but I want to discuss something very important, and that's one of our key core values. And and Steve, I know you've witnessed this in the last years as a board member, and now as chairman of the board, you're Mm. seeing us uh, basically prepare for God to open doors, but we don't we don't try to make things happen. We we prepare ourselves and then we respond to him and move. Yeah, and we get to see how God is so faithful in providing us with opportunities that we never even imagined yes, would yes. happen. And it's like, wow, here's a great way that we can move into India in a new way, the home groups. Yes. It wasn't like we were, Greg, let's plan this thing exactly. and we're going to launch it and we got to find a person and we got to do the development. The Lord brought it up and George Philip was really the 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 seed that yes. started that yeah. thing going. And I remember I, I went to India, I think it was 2018, and, and he started sharing what was happening. And I, I just felt in my spirit, we have to support this. We have to get behind this. But it yeah. was not my brilliant idea. And I think, Steve, one of the things when we share these things, we want to let you know that this is real. This will work in your life, in your personal life, when you're facing challenges and when you're struggling with a question. Just be open to do whatever God wants you to do, and he will show yeah. you the way. One other thing I would think you uh, you should add to that is be faithful to God's word. Yes. You know, yeah. be serious about your faith and make that the most important thing. Maybe it's a job that you're you're hoping to get or some new promotion or some other opportunity. Maybe it's a, a, a girl that you want to en- get engaged with if you're a guy. You know, <laughs> trust in the Lord yeah. with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. And when you can't see the path, he's going to put that in front of you if you make that a priority. Yeah, and you thought of uh, Proverbs 3, and I thought of Matthew six thirty three, where Jesus says, Seek first his kingdom mm-hmm. and his righteousness, and what? All these things will be added to you. Yeah. We are number one focus of Through the Bible is, yes, teaching, listening. You and I listen to the program every yep. day, giving out the Word of God, studying it, but also saying to God, we are here to do whatever you want us to do. And I, I just want to let our listening family know it is such a privilege to work with a board of directors. I bring you crazy ideas like television and home groups and the board says well if the lord is in this we'll go yeah absolutely greg again why don't you pray for us as we begin our study father what a joy it is to walk in step with the holy spirit and to to see and to feel and experience the direction from you that results in more and more people being led to Christ and growing deeper in Christ. I pray that that spirit would continue to to prevail in the ministry of Through the Bible and in our own lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Now here's Through the Bible with Dr. J. Vernon McGee. Now we have had two chapters on this matter of leprosy, and that's been bad enough, but It's going to get worse in this chapter. The subject here happens to be running issues. And fact of the matter is, I probably ought to read to you the first two verses. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. Now, that's not very nice, is it? And these running issues represent to us the repulsive pollution of secret sin. Now, we are hearing about a great deal of the pollution of our ecology, but there is a pollution of our souls also, and our minds, and our entire lives, in fact, of our physical bodies. These running sores, they actually are highly contagious and infectious, and they reveal to us the exceeding sinfulness of sin. You see, human nature is an overflowing cesspool and sewer of uncleanness. Not only is human nature defiled, but defiling. 
And not only do we get defiled, but we defile others. Not only is it corrupt, but it's corrupting. And this chapter here will hold up the mirror to nature. And after one look, no flesh can glory in his sight. Now, may I just say this word concerning this? Leprosy that we've looked at is the worst disease that is imaginable. And you'd think these running issues would be put before it. But actually, what we have here are those things that are contagious. And leprosy actually is not contagious. I have put in my book, the second volume on the book of Leviticus, a discussion, question and answer period with Dr. Liker, who's an authority on leprosy. He was asked the question, what causes leprosy? And here's his answer, and I'm quoting him. Leprosy is caused by tiny germs called leprosy bacilli, which can be seen only through a microscope. The bacilli were discovered in 1873 by the Norwegian doctor Hansen. That's why leprosy is sometimes called Hansen's disease. Now, the second question that was asked this good doctor was, how does a person get leprosy? And here's what he said, uh, quoting again, the bacilli are present in large numbers in the skin of certain types of leprosy patients. They pass from these patients to the skin of healthy people, mainly by bodily contact. They then enter the skin through tiny wounds and scratches. Only infectious patients, those who have many bacilli in their skin, are able to spread the disease. And then he goes on to say this, that the only way you can keep from getting leprosy would be, therefore, frequent bathing, washing of clothes, and keeping a clean house. And that's his literal words. That'll help to prevent the disease because many bacilli can be washed away with water and soap before they enter the skin. And he says the most important thing is to avoid bodily contact with infectious cases of leprosy. Now, leprosy, you see, was a disease that could not be kept a secret for long because it worked slowly, but it would finally break out But you see, running issues could be kept secret for a long time. And these latter represent the thought life of man as well as the overt act of sin. You see, at the very beginning, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, you see, this has to do, therefore, with that part of human nature that's defiled, and that part of human nature that's filthy, and that part of human nature that affects others. This is something that a great many have experienced, and they want to be cleansed. They want to be washed. They want to get it out of their system. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Job asked that question. Psalm 19.12 says, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. And then in Romans 7, 18, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. That was Paul. He mentions the fact of how he was a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but he says, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And then he went on to say, this is a faithful saying, worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Now, we have here, therefore, the nature of man that is hidden. No one else may know about it. And this secret sin, it can be passed on to others. This is what we know that's down deep in our hearts. It was Gerdy, the German, who said, I see no fault committed, which I too might not have committed. And there are those that believe that Gerdy was the greatest thinker that's ever been on this earth, even greater than Kent. 
And then Dr. Samuel Johnson commented like this. He says, every man knows that of himself, which he dares not tell to his dearest friend. And the Count de Maestri said, I do not know what the heart of a villain may be. I only know that of a virtuous man. And it's frightful. And even Shakespeare is written, go to your own bosom, knock there, and ask your heart what it doth know. And then Seneca, that Roman, a pagan Roman, but he astutely observes, why is there no man who confesses his vices? Then he answers it. It's because he has not yet laid them aside. It is a waking man only who can tell his dreams. And so the fellow that's still in sin that won't confess it is because that he's like the man that's still dreaming. And you ought to wake up before you can tell about your dream. Now, the curse of sin has affected man's power actually in the propagation of the race. If you look at these awful running issues, you'll find that they're connective with the generative organs of the race. I think for the most part, they're social diseases. They're deadly, virulent, and prevalent, more so than leprosy. Now, we find here, he makes that very clear, that this curse of sin has got down, moved right in to the human family. And this is what David meant when he cried out, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You see, there is filthiness and defilement that's connected with sexual sins that is appalling. Now today, in the new morality, it's quite interesting, they are turning up with the same old diseases with the new morality. And today, the social diseases, venereal diseases, are increasing at an alarming rate. That's the thing that he's talking about here. And that's the way sin is. Robs a person of the joy of their salvation. Now, actually, you're rather amazed that God talks about such a repulsive subject here. And he gives to man, I think here, a comprehensive view of the exceeding sinfulness of sin. And this is quite a remarkable view. We need to, I think, remember what Paul said. He says, whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now, notice again these verses I read. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. Now, you'll recall that back in 13, he said that he spoke unto Moses and Aaron. And now he's speaking to Moses and Aaron again. Chapter 14, the law of the leopard was only Moses. You see, the high priest Aaron is a prophetic picture of our great high priest, the Lord Jesus, and he alone can give comfort and understanding to the afflicted as well as extend mercy and grace. And so we find the writer to the Hebrews in Hebrews 5, 1 and 2, for every high priest taken from among man is ordained from man in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins who can have compassion on the ignorant and them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And today we have a great high priest, and he can't be touched with our sins, but he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, because he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Now I'm reading verses 2 and 3 here in Leviticus 15. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When any man hath a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue he is unclean, and this shall be his uncleanness in his issue, whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it's his uncleanness. Now, friends, this is vivid language, is it not? 
And this reveals how sickening, how disgusting, how abhorrent, how offensive, how impure, how repugnant, how utterly corrupt and corrupt is human nature today. The pus of sin is flowing from the hearts of men and women today. You can see it around you today. And the defilement is here. You can't rub shoulders with anyone without somehow or another it affecting your life. Because human nature is not only corrupt, it's corrupting. And you and I, if we meet, we are going to influence one another. I'll live my life in you, and you live your life in me. It can't be otherwise. You're a preacher, whether you know it or not, and you're preaching by your life. There was a drunkard. His mother was a very godly woman, and she lived down from the church when I was pastor in Pasadena, and this son of hers, you can always tell when he was on a what they call a toot, he'd come down the street using both sides of the street to hold himself up. And his mother, so distressed and ashamed, and she would ask me to talk with him. And one day I saw him coming down the street before he could get home. I turned him into my study there and sat him down and began to talk with him. I told him how low down he was. I told him what a big sinner he was, what a disgrace he was, and how cheap he was. And I called him everything that you possibly could call a man like that. And he just hung his head and took it off. And I said, don't you know that you are preaching by your life? He says, you calling me a preacher? And I said, yes. And he got up the best he could as a drunk, and he wanted to fight me. You could call him anything else in the world but a preacher. Now, I don't care who you are listening to me. You're a preacher. You're preaching by your life some message. You are influencing some. It has to be that way. Human nature is corrupting unless it's regenerated human nature, and sometimes then it's not too good. Would you like to listen to what our Lord Jesus said about the human heart and what comes out of man? What's in all of us? Listen to Matthew 15, verses 18 through 20. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashing hands defileth not a man. It's amazing today how people are interested in religious ceremonies, and they go through those religious ceremonies. And yet they've got a heart that's as filthy as it possibly could be. In fact, all of us have that kind of a heart, friends, unless it's been cleansed by the blood of Christ. And then these thoughts come into the heart. James makes it very practical. Every man's tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Paul could say, I know within my flesh dwelleth no good thing. The sower of sin, it may be visible or it may be invisible. It may be oozing blood and pus or it may appear on the surface. But it's there, the thought life and the secret sins are in view here. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. This is a passage that should bring down proud man and show how utterly disgusting he is in the light of God's presence. And it gives man another slant on how he appears to a righteous God. Listen again to David, Psalm 51, 4, against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil. God has emphasized this in his word again and again that the exceeding sinfulness of sin. Listen to him in Ezekiel as he spoke of these people. He says, when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted, and he says, thy father was an Amorite and thy mother a Hittite. And then in Isaiah 59, 2, 
but your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. You ought to read, by the way, all of the 59th chapter of Isaiah. Now, we are told here in verse 4 and 7, and I'm not going now into too much detail, but it says, Every bed whereon he lieth that hath the issue is unclean by everything he sets on, everything he touches. You see, God's concern with the daily life of his people. His law reaches into the minute areas of his life. He watched over them when they were asleep. And the man with an unclean issue, he contaminated the bed upon which he slept. And even his dreams were impure. Many a person spends a sleepless night not counting sheep, but recounting and recalling his sins with lustful pleasure. God's interested in what we think when we lie upon our pillows. And today he wants to control our thought life. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You see, God is interested in you. He's interested in you when you lie down, when you walk, and and he's interested in what you touch. And it's impossible today for a believer to rub shoulders with sinners in business or the social way. Uh, walk down our streets and look at these four-letter words that are just glaring at us today in every direction, and you get soil. The important thing is that we should confess our sins. And we all have this leprosy of sin. You see these running sores, these hidden sins. Now he talks here in verses 8 through 12. He says, and if he that hath the issue spit upon him that's clean. Believe me, this thing gets down where you feel almost disgusted but it reveals the nastiness of sin by contact. And this refers to that which is accidental. A believer today often finds himself in a public place in a street when some vile and dirty-minded person opens his mouth, and he hears these things. And we find here, as you read on, that even in public transportation, there's danger of contamination. And verses 10 and 11 remind us that after being in the company of some folk, a believer feels dirty all over. He's dirty and he needs to wash himself. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? The psalmist says, but taking heed thereto according to thy word. It's the reason we need to stay in the word of God because of the fact that we get dirty in this life. And the Lord Jesus said to Simon Peter, if I wash Thee not, thou hast no part with me. That is, you haven't any fellowship with me. And now he says to them, Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What a picture that we have here of the contamination of secret sin. And you run on through this section, and I'm not going to read now, but just lift out some of the high points here. The water and the blood both are used here for cleansing as you read on. And it means that the Holy Spirit must apply the sacrifice of Christ to these secret sins that are in our lives today. My, what a picture this is of secret sin in the lives of people today and even in the lives of believers. This is a sordid chapter. But who's it describing? Who's it a picture of? Picture you and a picture of me, my friend. That's the reason we need to be cleansed, to come into his presence. We'll have to leave off there today, pick up there next time. May God bless you richly, my beloved. Well, thank the Lord for second chances, or even third chances if we need it. 
You know, you can learn how you can come more into his presence, as Dr. McGee puts it, by visiting ttb.org and clicking on How Can I Know God? Or call 1-800-65-BIBLE and we'll put a few free resources in the mail to you. The Bible Bus continues in Leviticus 15 tomorrow. I'm Steve Schwetz and I'll save a seat just for you. Through the Bible is a five-year study of God's entire Word, and together we discover God's purposes in history and our lives, found only when we believe in Jesus Christ. Do you know Him yet?